The aim of this video is to give a motivation on why we should use the switch mode power electronics. So we will go through um, several sample power supply problems and uh, see how these problems can be solved using the linear electronics approach uh, wherever that is possible. And then we will also see how the same power supply specifications can be met by a switch mode power electronics approach. And in the process we will uh, clearly see the two key advantages of switch mode power converters. Uh, in fact, these two figures um, tell the complete story. So if we use a linear power supply, then that is going to be uh, shown here, uh, huge, uh, bulky, and uh, they run very hot. Whereas the same uh, power supply um, application, using the switch mode uh, power electronics approach, it would be much, much smaller, and they run very cool. So here is the power supply problem one. I have an input voltage which can vary from 10 volts DC to 14 volts DC. For example, this could be a 12 volts battery when it's fully charged is 14 volts, when it's fully discharged is 10 volts. Now from this input, I want to generate a very precisely regulated 5 volts DC output. And it's given that the maximum output current can be one ampere. Given this specification, if you use a linear electronics approach, one possible circuit is as shown here. So this is called as a series linear regulator. Uh, it has a transistor which is uh, called as the pass transistor and that is connected in series with the load and the input source. That's why it's called a series linear regulator. And by definition, this transistor is operated in its linear region. Now how this uh, circuit is controlled is uh, you want to regulate the output voltage at 5 volts in this example. So we would sense the output voltage based on the error between 5 volts and the sensed measured um, output voltage. We would control the um, uh, base current so that the output is always regulated. Okay. So, so for example, if the output voltage um, goes low, then we would increase the base current so that the collector current also increases and bringing the um, load to its uh, correct uh, required voltage level. Or another way to look at this is, uh, let's say we are operating at uh, input voltage of four, uh, so let's say 12 volts. Okay? So if the input voltage is 12 volts, then the control is such that um, 7 volts is dropped across the pass transistor so that the output voltage is regulated at 5 volts. Now if the input goes to a higher value, the 14 volts, the maximum value, then we would control it such that the transistor drops 9 volts across it so that the output voltage is still 5 volts. And finally, if the input voltage is the lowest 10 volts, then we only drop 5 volts across the pass transistor, so the output is again regulated at 5 volts. So this way, we can uh, get a very precise regulation of the output voltage, very good control. And um, a, a key advantage of uh, linear electronics actually is that the output voltage is free of uh, noise or what we call as the ripple voltage uh, that we see in the switch mode approach. So if it has uh, so many advantages, then why don't we just go ahead and use linear regulators? Obviously it has some major disadvantages. So let's look at the efficiency of um, th this power supply. Uh, efficiency of course is the ratio of the output power PO to the input power PN. And the output power PO is the um, output voltage BO uh, times the load current IO divided by the um, uh, input power is V in times I in the input voltage in the current. Now from the specifications we can clearly see that VO is 5 volts and we can consider the 1 ampere maximum operating condition and uh, we can also consider the 14 volts input um, arbitrarily and uh, what is unknown is what is this input current I in. If you look at the um, circuit, we see that the input source, the pass transistor and the load, they are all in series. Therefore, the input current is also the same as the load current. So plugging in the numbers, the output power is 5 volts times 1 ampere. Input power is 14 volts times the same 1 ampere. And that gives us an efficiency of 35.7% efficiency. Now, in these days of uh, energy conservation and um, efficient appliances and environmental concerns and so on, it is uh, almost criminal 
to use a power supply with like 30% efficiency. And it's, it's, not, it's not just the low efficiency number. Okay? So we get low efficiency because we use a lot of power. Okay? So if you look at the power lost in this uh, transistor, uh, the power in any component is the voltage across the component times the current through the component. So for the transistor, it would be Vt, the voltage across the transistor, times the current, which is same as the load current, Io. Okay. So once again, considering the operating condition of 14 volts input, um, the Vt is um, on one side we have 14 volts, on the other side we have 5 volts. So the difference is dropped across the transistor, that would be 14 minus 5 or 9 volts, and the current is 1 ampere. So the re that results in 9 watts of power uh, lost in the transistor. Now we'll see in the later videos that uh, the study of power electronics is all about waveforms, waveforms of um, various currents and voltages and powers at various points in the circuit under different operating conditions. So let's get used to um, drawing some of these waveforms in this very basic uh, circuit. So I'm going to show the uh, waveforms uh, of um, voltage and the current of the transistor. Uh, both versus time and from that we will um, uh, get the power waveform. Okay. So this is the Vt versus time um, as we uh, indicated before. It is always 9 volts um, so that is what is drawn here. And if you draw the current waveform it is always 1 ampere versus time uh, because we are considering that operating condition. So the instantaneous product of this voltage and this current is the power lost in the transistor or P loss. So it's uh, 9 volts times 1 ampere is 9 watts uh, all the time. Okay. So, so we see that just to get a 5 watts of output power, we are actually dissipating as much as 9 watts of power. And this has to be dissipated somewhere. So we need to use um, very large bulky heat sinks or other thermal management mechanisms. Uh, for example, fans or at very high power levels, um, uh, even water cooling and so on. So, um, so that's one very major drawback and it impacts the power density of the power supply. Power, de power density is defined as the power processed per unit volume or per unit weight. And power density is a very important metric of any power supply. Um, and that is um, going to be very low for linear power supplies. Okay, so that brings us to how do we do this in a switch mode power electronics approach. So here we use a bipositional switch as shown here. Okay. The input and the output are the same. The input can vary between 10 volts to 14 volts as before. And we want a final output voltage of regulated 5 volts DC. Um, so the bipositional switch is also called as an SPDT, stands for single pole double throw. And in this example, this pole A, there is a single pole and the double throws, the two throws are position 1 and position 2. And uh, we switch this bipositional switch at very high frequencies. And uh, when the switch is in position 1, so that is when it is connected like this, then the uh, this voltage V sub A is same as the input voltage as indicated here, VA equals VN. And when the switch is in the other position, position 2, then V sub A is obviously shorted by the switch, therefore VA equals 0 at that instant, whenever the switch is in position 2. So if we had to plot V sub A waveform versus time, this is how it would look like. Now this corresponds to an input voltage condition of 12 volts, and um, um, so when switch is in position 1, this red waveform is equal to 12 volts. When switch is in position 2, it is equal to 0. Now, the uh, green waveform is the average of this V sub A, okay? uh, the time average. And um, clearly, by controlling the um, duration for which the switch is in position 1, which we call as the on interval, by controlling this on interval relative to the off interval, we can control the average of the switching waveform. So that is a key concept of this type of uh, power converters. Now this is still a switching waveform, not suitable directly for the load, but um, the, the concept is we are able to control its average value. In the later slide we will see how we actually filter out the high frequency component and retain just this DC component. Okay. 
Now, illustrating this further, if the input goes to a higher value, let's say 14 volts, then the VA waveform would be something like this. Because of the higher input voltage, it is actually equal to 14 volts when switch is in position 1. But in order to get the same average 5 volts, the screen waveform, we make the on interval shorter than the previous case with 12 volts input. And similarly, if the uh, input voltage goes to the low area and 10 volts, then the situation will be something like this. The uh, on interval voltage is just 10 volts, but the duration of the on interval is now longer than the other two cases. So that once again, the average is the same 5 volts. Okay? So that is the key concept. So this then would be the um, complete schematic of a type of converter called the uh, step down or the buck converter. So we saw from the previous slide that the uh, pole output voltage, VA, has the <coughs> required DC component uh, as well as a high frequency, switching frequency component, which is undesirable. So we use uh, a low pass filter, an LC filter, to filter out the high frequency component and retaining only the required DC component. Okay, so this would be the well-regulated 5 volts in our example. Now, the size of the filter required, both L and C, they are a strong function of the switching frequency. Higher the frequency, smaller is the size of the L and C, and that is the reason why we switch at very high frequencies. Um, for this kind of uh, buck converters at fairly low power levels, uh, anything um, in the several hundreds of kilohertz or even a few megahertz is the currently uh, typical values of the switching frequencies. Let's briefly talk about the electronic implementation of the bipersonal switch. Now, in uh, power semiconductor devices, we do not have a single equivalent of the SPDT switch. So we realize this function by using two uh, SPST, stands for single pole, single throw switches, or they are simply the on or off switches. So this um, bipersonal switch can be realized using uh, this arrangement where we have uh, two on-off switches. So by controlling this gate drive signal, if Q is 1, the top switch is on, and if it is 0, the top switch is off, and, and so on. Okay. And uh, um, the two SPST switches themselves for the uh, kind of uh, power levels and um, uh, switching frequency levels that we'll be focusing on in, uh, in, in the series of videos, um, these switches are typically MOSFETs and IGBTs. So a complete electronic implementation of uh, this SPDT or this bipersonal switch is, uh, is as shown here. And this is suitable for high frequency switching needed in power electronic converters. So we have seen that the uh, switch mode power converter can result in good regulation. We can control the on interval duration and uh, we can also give uh, a good quality output voltage by choosing uh, appropriate L and C filter. But how does that result in high efficiency? So that we saw was one of the drawback of the linear regulator. So let's look at the, uh, the waveforms of the switch voltages and the current again. So this would be the, uh, let's consider the, this top switch called this is uh, VT and the current through that would be IT. So VT, when the switch is on, would be, since the switch is on, it's an ideal um, switch, the voltage across the switch is zero as indicated here. Okay. Now when the switch is turned off, the other switch is turned on, they are complementary. So this voltage is tied to the ground. So the voltage across this switch is the complete V in or 14 volts in, in this example. Okay. So it's a switching waveform, which is between zero and V in. And, um, and if you look at the current IT, let's assume this current here is 1 ampere. This is uh, similar to the load current. Okay. So when the switch is on, it is carrying this current 1 ampere. Therefore, the current waveform would be whenever the switch is on, it is 1 ampere. And when the switch is off, by definition, it is not conducting any current. So that is 0. Okay. So if you look at the power waveform, which is what we are interested at at this point in time, uh, that is simply the product of instantaneous voltage and the instantaneous current. So that will be this waveform. Okay, so it is always zero. The reason is during this on interval here, the voltage is zero even though the current is finite, so their product is zero. And in the off interval, 
the current is zero therefore even with finite um, voltage the power is still zero okay so theoretically this is assuming all ideal components we have zero losses in the switches and again if you notice in our complete schematic we only have the switches operating in the switch mode therefore zero losses and we have l and c components and those are also ideally lossless so theoretically a switch mode power converter can have 100 percent efficiency if all the components are ideal but even with practical components practical switches l and c with all their non-idealities it is uh, relatively easy to get um, efficiencies in the range of 95 percent for many of the dc dc converters so let's consider a slightly different problem now um, now i want i have um, a low input voltage 1.5 volts to 2 volts and i still want a precisely regulated 5 volts output at a fairly low current level now there is uh, actually no way that you can do this in a linear approach you cannot using series regulators or shunt uh, linear regulators boost the input voltage to get a higher output voltage uh, whereas um, in a switch mode power electronics approach there is a converter called boost converter this is a schematic and this is the input output relationship and we can get any higher voltage um, at the output compared to the input voltage so it, it's it's uh, easily it's easy to do and it is done at very high high efficiency as well the last problem we will consider is that of an isolated power supply so the input voltage is now actually an ac voltage uh, 120 volts RMS 60 Hertz and I want an output voltage of uh, still regulated 5 volts DC and uh, at a much higher current 20 amperes if you want to use the linear approach then you would use a 60 Hertz transformer since the input voltage is AC you can use a transformer so you'd use that to step it down to say about 8 volts RMS and then you would use a diode bridge rectifier as shown here to get a DC voltage so this voltage can be let's say 12 volts in that range okay. and you would use the um, series regulator that we saw in power supply problem number one to get the well regulated 5 volts output the drawbacks or the original drawback of very low efficiency in this part of the linear regulator that still remains and the corresponding power dissipation low power density problem are also retained in addition this is a 60 hertz transformer and therefore it is uh, very bulky expensive and uh, lossy as well in the power electronics approach we would use what is known as a full bridge dc dc converter for this uh, power supply problem so here we would uh, straight away rectify the 120 volts to get a higher dc voltage right in the 200 volts range then we will use these uh, igbgs or mosfets to generate a controlled square wave it's a um, uh, pulse width controlled square wave that is applied to this high frequency transformer and we'll use the turns ratio of this transformer to get the step down voltage step down function then this uh, again this ac waveform is rectified to get um, a unipolar uh, pulsating waveform at this point similar to the output the v sub a output in our power supply problem one then use an lc filter to remove the switching frequency component and retain only the regulated dc part so uh, once again we'll get a very precisely regulated output voltage and uh, the advantages are um, again there are no losses if the devices are ideal we get theoretically 100 percent efficiency but even in practice very high efficiencies um, but we also use uh, high frequency like for example 100 kilohertz transformer instead of uh, 60 hertz so that results in uh, a much smaller transformer we can save typically anywhere by a factor of 50 to 100 compared to a line frequency transformer the second advantage is that since we are trying to filter out only the high frequency components and not 60 hertz components as in the linear uh, case uh, the size of the filters needed the lnc would be significantly smaller and i already talked about the higher efficiency but one main drawback of any switching power converter is um, since we are switching high voltages and high currents at uh, fairly high frequencies we generate a lot of electromagnetic interference from these power converters and we need to take care of this in the design stage 
by appropriate EMI filters, good layout techniques and so on.